Welcome back to C Sharp Tutorials for Beginners. This is number 13 and we're doing lists. So what is a list? A list, like an array, is a collection of values, although they have fewer rules. A list does not have to be fixed length, but the main rule is all values still need to be the same type. So when would you use a list? So honestly, if you need to store multiple values in a single variable and you don't absolutely have to use an array, I would say your best bet is going to be a list. Now, of course, there are going to be scenarios where an array is better. But for now, as a beginner, just put that out of your mind. Don't worry about it and use a list because it's going to be a lot easier. And in most scenarios, it's going to be faster. So to make a list, you start out with the word list. Then you put a less than bracket and then you give it a type. So you can say string, and then a greater than bracket, and then you give it a variable name. So we can call it my names, just like that. To initialize our list, we can either say my names equals new list of type string, and then open parenthesis, close parenthesis to create an empty new list called my names, or if we wanted to add values already, we could say my names equals new list of type string. And then we could open up curly braces and give it some names. Jim, Steve, Marsha. Similarly to an array, lists can be indexed. So we could say string my first name equals my names zero so we could say string my third name equals my names two because remember the indexes start at zero and count up so this would be at index zero one and two just like with arrays we can use a for loop to iterate over the list except instead of the length property we need the count property so length for arrays, count for lists. And then just like with the array, we can do a console.writeline, the array's name at the i index. So for every i, zero until it hits the count and drops out, we're going to print the element at i, which would be zero, one, and two. So if we run that, we get all three of our names. So lists have an incredible amount of features in them. If you put in your list name, my names, and put a period, you can see all of the methods and properties available to you from a list. But since this is a beginner's tutorial, what we're going to focus on today is the ability to add and remove from the list. So we already have our list that has three names in it. We're printing our list here, so let's add a new name to our list. So we can say my names dot add, and then add your new name. So how about Kevin? Let's say you want to add another name. You can add Pan. So it's that easy to add a couple of names, and now we can take our for loop that prints all of our names. And again, it's going to print them all because we're going up to count. So this doesn't tell it to print three. It tells it to print them all. So now we're going to print the three that we have, add two more, and then print the five that we now have. So we get Jim, Steve, Marsha. Then we get Jim, Steve, Marsha, Kevin, Pam. Let's go ahead and put an empty right line between them. So we can see the difference in what we're doing. And now just like with add, say you want to remove one, you can just say remove. Let's take out Steve and let's take out Marsha. And again, let's print them all. Let's put a right line between those. So now we have three, we're adding two new ones, 
and then we're removing two old ones. So we should end up with Jim, Kevin, Pam. And that is what we did. It is important to note that when we did this remove, it only removes the first binding of what you have asked it to remove. So say we add Steve before Jim. So we have Steve and Jim and then Steve again. When we do this remove, it's going to remove this Steve, not both Steves and not the second Steve. It's going to remove the first occurrence of Steve. So now if we run this, you can see we still have a Steve, but it's not the first Steve. So let's blow all of this away. Now, say you've made a list and you've done what you want to do with it, and maybe you need to remake that list. And you don't want to create a completely separate variable because you don't need the first list. You want to save your memory. So all you have to do is say my names dot clear, and that will clear all of the elements out of your list. So we've created a list, populated it, and now we're immediately clearing it. So when we run this, count is going to be zero. So it's going to say for i equals zero, i is less than zero, which it's not. So it's never going to hit this at all. And we're just going to have nothing. And that one right line wrote itself down there. So that's as far as I'm going to go with lists for now. It's barely scratching the surface as to what they can do. But now that you know how to create them and use them, we can add lots and lots of features as these tutorials go along because we will use lots and lots of lists. So now that we have learned the alternative to arrays lists, next up we're going to learn an alternative to the for loop so we can use to more easily iterate over our lists. So next up we are going to be learning the for each loop. Great way to iterate very easily and understandably. So thank you for watching everybody. I do appreciate you. Happy coding and as always until next time, take care.